The first one is that you do, you fulfill the obligations and you do good until you taste the sweetness of that good which is the pleasure of Allah and that becomes your unique driving force in life. The pleasure of Allah, the rida of Allah becomes your exclusive driving force in life. It becomes your drive, it becomes your momentum, attaining his pleasure. And that's how the hadith goes. You don't come close to Allah with anything more beloved than fulfilling the ob doing your obligations right, praying on time, fasting, doing the things that Allah tells you to do, fulfilling the obligations. And then you get closer to Him with a nawafil. You taste the sweetness of the obligations and now you start to do the voluntary deeds. Hatta uhibba. Until Allah loves you. Until Allah loves you with that exclusive special love. And when Allah loves you that way, كُنْتُ سَمْعَهُ الَّذِي يَسْمَعُ بِهَا Allah becomes the hearing with which you see, with which you hear, the sight with which you see, the hand with which you strike, the, the, the way that you walk, everything. Allah becomes, you become entrenched in that pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seeking that pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it becomes your exclusive driving force. There is no second, it's just the pleasure of Allah. That's one way of reaching that status with Allah, where the rida of Allah, the pleasure of Allah, is what drives you to all of your good deeds, through all of your good deeds, so that you keep on doing more and more and more and more, and you can't get enough of it. Because you tasted the sweetness of prayer now, five times is not enough anymore. Tasted the sweetness of fasting now, Ramadan is not enough anymore. Tasted the sweetness of hajj, hajj is not enough anymore, I need to go to Umrah. As soon as I get my foot on that plane in Jeddah or Medina, Ya Rabb, when am I coming back? When do I get to come back for Umrah? Are you making plans already for the winter, thinking about when's your next chance? If Allah unlocks that for you. Some people never go, but their hearts are there, and Allah is accepting it for them. They never get a chance to go there, but their hearts are there and connected to it. So Allah unlocks these things for you, and you taste the pleasure of those good deeds, and that becomes the driving force. The second one is that the sincerity of your repentance, it's actually a more sudden one. A person makes a sincere repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the pleasure of Allah in that repentance completely removes the effect of the pleasure of that disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that's where you find those ahadith about a person who was in major sin and then suddenly switches. The pleasure of Allah overwhelms any type of pleasure they used to get from that disobedience and now they are calibrated in that way. And so they immediately rise in status with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The third one is when Allah tests you with a major tragedy. Allah takes away something from you. And through that tragedy you do ihtisab, which is to seek the reward. And the reward is Allah's pleasure. And you try to seek that pleasure from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's what sees you through that tragedy. And that again becomes the way that you contextualize all of your tragedies and all of your tribulations. That a person would reach that status of wilayah. 